Test. All right, great. All right. All this new studio crap. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's my problem. I'm not a professional salesman, okay? What I am is I'm a real real estate guy that shares what he has and shares what he knows. And, oh, my God, what a pain in the ass learning all this new shit is. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, what you didn't hear, I'll go ahead and repeat again. So, uh, as you guys know, I, I, I've been looking for that's great so uh, here's my spiel again i wrote that book above my head it's been a big seller and uh i've since then done a mentorship and i had my first mentee or my first real testimonial success story not my first one i got several of them but that's first one i took a videotape of and uh, ron ron just did an awesome job if you haven't seen it watch the testimonial he's uh, by his own estimation has made over two hundred thousand dollars and uh, in profit and equity and he's just killing. He's already bought f seven properties now, but he bought four as of that testimonial. And uh, uh, he's got three more in the, in the works of closing. So, you know, the thing is, there's all kinds of different opportunities in property. And, you know, a lot of people just lack confidence because they don't know. So if you just got here, look, my story is I was 19 and, uh, you know, I was renting a place and I opportunity came up they said how'd you like to buy it and that's kind of how I learned about owner financing and how I learned out I didn't have to have any credit and how I learned that uh, I could buy this thing even though I had no uh, you know prior history uh, I was long hair down to here and bloodshot eyes because I always had allergies and I worked in the cabinet I had dust in my face I don't come from a family of money lived out in a crappy dirty town called Lancaster California out in the desert and uh, but it was a lot of fun <laughs> I'll say that but I uh, Anyway, so don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt that you can make it. You know, I get people that just absolutely doubt themselves. And, you know, somebody had actually uh, uh, kind of thrown some water on the testimony. They go, well, that guy was smart. Like, you know, like I'm dumb. He was smart. Can somebody dumb do it? Well, yes, I I'm the testimonial for that, okay? <laughs> I'm the guy that didn't finish high school. I'm the guy that had nothing. I'm the guy that lived in the trailer parks out in the crappy parts of town. And, uh, and you know, I just, you know, yeah, but I mean, I've had a great life. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed my life. My folks didn't have a lot of money, but uh, you know what? Uh, they were a lot of fun. <laughs> and uh, anyways, so don't doubt that you can do it. Don't doubt that you can do it. Okay. People that want you to believe that you got to have a mindset. I mean, actually Chris Crone has ruined the word mindset for me and not that I ever loved it, but it's just, he's ruined it for me. You know, I very frustrated with people saying, Oh, look, look at the lifestyle. Look at, you know, and they show all this bullshit that has nothing to do with making real estate. And then they say, okay, you want to learn, then that's great. Go to the links below. And then you get connected to salesmen that hard sell you on some kind of crap. And here's the deal. Uh, when you learn from me, look, buy my book. You're going to spend money on paper. Buy my book. It's 10 bucks, okay? Uh, 10 bucks on Kindle, 20 bucks on paper. And you'll quickly recognize that I'm the real deal. And you'll also realize that it's a lot simpler than you think. It's a lot simpler than you think. So many people think that it is just uh, much tougher than it is. And it's, it's just, it's work. Don't get me wrong. It's work. And you'll see, I was actually, and when I say work, I mean, it's... It's not like working like the rest of your life, right? It's like work hard and get paid really, really, really well. And that's what you want to do. You want to get paid really, really well for your efforts. And that's what real estate uh, can afford to you. And that's what it can do for you. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, I got a GED. You know what? I, I, I mean, <laughs> GED, what does that mean? It's a, I don't know. It's equivalency of, it's an equivalency of a high school education, which is not much. Uh, but yeah, I actually doesn't matter, but I dropped out of high school and then actually I took a test and then that was the last day I ever went to high school was just to take the test. Back then you could take a test and then you could just walk away. And then about a month later, they send you a paper saying, Hey, you passed, which is no surprise because it's so damn easy. But, uh, yeah, general education diploma. Thank you. See, I, you know what? I don't have a copy of it. <laughs> I never needed it. And, uh, I, you know, and I can tell you, I've hired many people and you know what? I don't hire them. I don't ask it. Did you finish high school? I don't ask for any prerequisite of education. Uh, I just say, show me what you can do. And if they can do it, great. And I got software guys and all, all kinds of people. It's people that, you know, that's the thing. You can, 
you can do anything and really look at your you can learn through youtube you can you know you can i mean literally you can learn without reading now you know i mean you can communicate if you even if you can't read if you can listen and you can absorb what somebody's talking about you can learn from just my youtube videos and that's free uh you know I, I just listen to my youtube be like a giant audiobook of about two thousand hours because i've made hundreds of videos but anyhow my point today and i don't even really have one i'm just trying to share right now i'm glad i just survived hooking the audio up by myself <laughs> so uh what 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 uh anyways anybody got any questions anybody see the anybody see ron the testimony i released last night i tell you it's so this is what is funny to me this is really kind of funny to me and i'm kind of looking around here let's see yeah okay so here it is okay this is what's so pathetic i always tell you guys the masses are the asses and i truly believe that i know it's 100 percent true believe me it's like it's like the smart real estate agents they're about one out of ten right so 90 percent of them are really the asses, the 10% are the ones that actually make things happen and, and actually are, are good. And it goes for people that hustle too. He people that work hard like me. Uh, it, we're one out of 10, okay? One out of 10. And, and, but the best thing is be the one out of 10 that has the knowledge like I have with this real estate, okay? Then you're like one in a million, okay? And you can be that person. You can be that person. But I realize, be skeptical, don't believe a thing I say. Spend 10 bucks on the book and read it, and then, you know, if you can't, if you, if you, if you can't, if you can't put out 10 bucks for a book, then just hang it up, because if, if you can't risk $10, forget it. Now, I do, I am opposed to anybody risking hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands, and people get caught up in the stuff. In fact, we can even peek over at a Chris Crone video, because he, he's one of the guys that, to me, it just, I mean, I, I thought Grant was kind of bad. Uh, you know, Grant just talks about himself, talks about how much money is the greatest asset in the world. And would you please invest with me? Okay. And Chris Crone is, he kind of like sells you on, I'm going to show you. And then he doesn't show you a damn thing and links below. And then, uh, you know, presumably phone numbers to go to or whatever. But what I like to do is show you, you learn something from me. Generally, you learn something from me. Most of my videos are all about how to do it, what I've done, not links below, links below, not that way. So let's see, uh, what else we got here? Uh, you're overeducated. Yep. It's worth it. I believe it. Yeah, over, and believe me, uh, you know, I know, believe me, I know. I've, I've dealt with some really educated people and I always come out on the you know, I mean, there's, and there's, listen, I've got brilliant engineers that work for me. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, I have some patents and things that I was something I wanted to pursue. I had an idea and what I did is I just hired people smarter than me. That was easy. That's actually the Henry Ford model, right? The one time they, they tried to put him out, oh, there's a court deal and he was saying he was basically somewhat incompetent. And he said, listen, I got, and this is back in the you thirties know, or something. And he said, look, I got, I got a little pad on my, you know, he had the first iPad kind of. He said, I've got, I got a little pad with buttons on it. And he goes, if I push a button, my lawyers come in. If I push another button, you know, I've got my engineers coming in. And, you know, in other words, he, he basically had the internet in his building working for him. You know, he had every kind of brain he needed right there. And it's kind of like what we got now with the internet. We got so much, so many resources at our disposal. It's pretty amazing. So look, let, let me go to what I was going to show you first. Let's just take a look at this. This is, this is a couple hours ago. Uh, not even not even that right not even that so this is me in the pickup let me get here of course i'm fiddling with the camera okay let's see if you guys hear this let's just tell me if you can hear it house here it's got well water it's got electricity that's important it's got it's got a metal shed back here that's useful for uh in you know kind of industrial use. now take a look over my shoulder there see right there now, that's a water well. Well, I found another water well, too, and it was a big one. It was probably like a six or eight inch. So this thing's really got some... And I was, I'm sorry to see it didn't have a cap on it. So we're going to get that thing capped right away. But this is already pulling water. So I got a water well, which I think is great. There's another one uh, here. Uh, this is a... So I got a shed here. There's power back there. I can see they got 220, but I can also see that they don't have three-phase electricity. So that's one of the things I'll be looking into is to see if they have, and look over my shoulder here behind me, see that right there, that's a well. And there's, there's another well too. I don't know if they drilled two for any reason, but there's another well. 
and uh, again over here. So you can look, see the power. The anyway, but I can see that there's more than enough power on the street that to bring in three phase electricity. Okay, so I'm going to get into that just a little bit. So this is a, this is like five acres of property, and I'm paying a million bucks for it. I already got. I don't mind. See, normally I don't even talk about this stuff openly, but I this one I already got under contract. It's it's a deal. I'm closing it. But it's got a little shed in the back. You can see off there, and then there's a house behind that. And you know the thing is, is and it's it's got there's city sewer. Okay, that's important. And then. And now it does not have three phase. Now three phase electricity, just so you know, that's really important. If you're gonna, and I'm thinking maybe kind of an industrial park, but I mean this has all sorts of possibilities. You know, general retail, it got some things like that going for it too. But our office complexes, you know, I got tons of offices. But what I like about this is the location. I like the highway stuff. It'll just blow your mind what stuff on a highway is worth when it really matures. Uh, you know, you go look and you, you'll see, a, you know, a half acre and, or, or, you know, and you're going, what, 1.5 million? <laughs> and, and then well, you believe your mind blows even more when somebody buys it a week later and says it's a great deal. Uh, because, you know, like an auto, you can put a trailer on the back and have a, a, a you know, auto sales, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's location, right? Everybody knows the old saying, it's location, location, location. Well, it's true. It is true. And... You know, that's why I kind of tend, you know, I mean, I've bought every kind of crappy property you can imagine. And I, I've shown you on Google Earth, you know, just the dumps that I've owned. And, but guess what? I made money on them. And it was back when I, you know, I make 10 grand back in the 80s. Okay, back in the 80s, 10 grand is probably like making 30 grand now. Uh, it was nice. And it propelled me on to better things. And you can do the same thing. You can do the same thing. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, I'm a, I, I, I like real high-end wine. I like, I'm a big cab drinker. I like really good high-end cabs. And uh, Dave Del Dotto, who is a, who's what you would have called a guru back in the 80s, uh, he bought infomercials. In fact, he made a fortune because he, he actually bought uh, a 18 months worth of infomercials at about noon on Sundays. That was like the cheapest time you could buy but anyhow he bought like a year and a half's worth and i think he paid fifteen hundred dollars for that hour and a half every sunday and the very first sunday he sold a hundred and ten thousand dollars worth of books <laughs> so it's pretty amazing and uh uh anyways uh but but he is he really is a true real estate investor and although i never met him back then and i owned his book how to make nothing but cash i i he, he got into the vineyard. He actually has some of the best wine out in, in uh, Napa, uh, Del Dotto Vineyards. So I went out there and, uh, uh, you know, and actually I, I, me and a buddy went out there. And actually I took my mom out there too, you know, my mom with dementia. Uh, she's a blast. Actually, she's a lot of fun. She really is a lot of fun. And I miss her right now because then she's in California. But uh, uh, I told her I may come up there and take her to Paso Robles, go have some wine. But... Anyway, so I go out there, and anyhow, uh, my buddy treated me to a party out there, and, and uh, he, he likes wine even more than me. He's got 1,200 bottles in his home. But uh, uh, he, uh, he uh, got me set up there, and I ended up meeting Dave Del Dot, and we had a long conversation, and uh, he actually, it was funny. But one of the things we talked about, because uh, I told him I was going to release the books before I released the book, and I was talking about, you know, he said, yeah, he goes, you know, I made those courses, and I talked to him about that, that you know, at that time that I know he bought uh, you know, internet or, or I'm sorry, uh, infomercial time on television. And I said, you know what the sad thing is? I said, most people don't look at this stuff. He goes, oh, he goes, Tom, he goes, the books just gather dust. They don't read them. They don't read them. Okay. And, and so I, what I realized is, is that, you know, I offer a mentorship and I'll plug it if you want to take it. I mean, I'm going to end up charging. I get, listen, I get offers for thousands of dollars if, if I'm even fathers that want me to talk to their sons, uh, all kinds of stuff, or people want me to just spend time, but it doesn't matter. Listen, whether we have lunch together, and I, uh, I'm going to tell you the same thing that, like I'm telling you right now, or in the mentorship course, it's the same thing. The big deal about the mentorship course is kind of like a gym. When you go to a gym, you join a gym, you know, you don't go, right? Most of us don't go that much. I, I, but I took up jujitsu, and now I'm expected to wrestle with other people. Well, that's accountability. I have to be there. I need to be there. I have to be there. And so... The beauty of what of my mentorship class is, I'm there, 
You can ask me anything you want. In fact, I do about two to three hour, two to three hours of questions and answers i did three and a half hours with this new class that's starting it's starting actually ne technically next week but i did an informal and i'll tell you i spent three and a half hours and and uh, just answering questions and telling stories and telling them you know about just you know it, it eliminates the fear it eliminates the fear when you talk when you, when you know somebody that's actually really done it you know and, and this this stuff where these guys do this razzle dazzle and then show this amazing lifestyle and it's links below and then talk to the salesman and get the paperwork and the crap and then it sits there and collects dust and you don't do anything with it it's different you know with me i can tell you even if you're my student and you ask me a silly question or something that's already in the book i'm going to say come on go read the book i'm not going to answer your question i'm just not going to do it you have to do the work I'm not doing you any favors if I don't be honest with you. You got to do the work, but it's there's like it's like easy to do. It's just you do it. It's just like do it, you know. So, anyways, let's keep, let's keep looking. All right, all right, Jose. Ron is a very smart guy, but I feel I can. Yeah, listen, Ron. Ron has common sense. I'm not saying he's not smart either, by the way. But what I'm saying is people think I'm really smart, okay? And I'm not really smart. I mean, I've got a lot of common sense. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm smart like a fox. And that's what you need to be, you know, smart like a fox, you know, just be smart. And, and streetwise, I guess, is a way to put it. But, and, and you know, look, at Ega, when you say you wish you did real estate back in the 1990s, well, I mean, if you're old enough, yeah, I, you, you should have. I mean, I was doing it in the 80s when I was, you know, 19. And, uh, but what I was going to say is it's never too late. Number one, it's never too late. Don't think that it's too late. It's not too late. You can always get started. It's, you, it, it's, you know, look at, look at Ron. I mean, he's not a spring chicken. He's been around a while, but, and I can tell you right now, I got some friends that are really impressive, smart, you know, engineers and they don't know. I mean, they don't know hardly anything about real estate. And, and, uh, and I, you know, these are my buddies, okay? And I, once in a while, they say, hey, you know, I'd like to learn more. Can I buy you lunch? And, and, I, and I take them for a ride, and I, you know, I show them you know, tens of millions of dollars of real estate that I own right near my own home. And, and I'll say, see, it's easy. And they'll go, uh, you know, it doesn't seem easy still. And so it, it don't, don't think that you're not smart enough, because believe me, if you don't know, you don't know, you know? And, and like Ron made a good point. He said the other day, he said, look, to do is to know. To do is to know. And that's why uh, people that try to teach you that have never done it, they don't know. It's not the same. So they're teaching the theoretical. It doesn't work. It does not work. Uh, there is just so many nuances to it and everything else. But I'm telling you, th this is all you need to get started is the book, okay? And you can do it. You can make, I mean... I got, I got tons of testimonials from people that got my book. I got people, I got testimonials from people that just watched my videos for three years before I even made a book. So it, it, you, it can be learned. It can absolutely be learned. Uh, so uh, let's, let's take a look here. Uh, let's see. Give me a second. Let me get this figured out. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, so... See if I can show you that other video. Uh, all right, here let's let's finish watching the rest of this thing here real quick, and if you guys got any questions, I'll I'll answer. It's, it's not going to be a big deal, you know. I mean, I don't think it costs a thousand bucks, but or a couple thousand maybe. Okay. Oh yeah, that's me talking about adding three phase. So this is like really important. I know I tell you guys, cause, but it is important. So I want you to know it's important. When you have a, you, you need three phase electricity generally in a business park or, or you know, most places, any kind of industrial, even, you know, even a commercial center, uh, sometimes they're reliant on three phase ovens if they got, you know, a restaurant where there's no gas, that sort of thing. But basically, you can just look at a telephone pole and each one of those canisters represents a phase, those transformers, right? If you got one, it's just 100, they got 110. If there's two, they got 220, you know, maybe two, two 110s. And then if they got three, though, a three, the, the third one is the high leg, we call it. And that is the, the 220. And there's machines that utilize all three, 110, 110, and 220. And that three phase is very important to a lot of people that run big equipment. And it is also super efficient for air conditioners. I love it. I have all my air conditioners are, are three phase electricity whenever I, I get a chance to use them. That's what I do. 
Uh, but let, let's watch this. Right, that, that that's what I was talking about just now, though. So, next thing I got to do is I got to double check on some of the zoning stuff and make sure it's what I want. Oh yeah, I almost ran over a piece of plywood. <laughs> that nails must have come off a truck. Now take a look at that traffic out there. You see that traffic, the far right? Plywood with nails. You can see that is a nice, that is a nice busy thoroughfare. That's money right there. That's money. And uh, let's see where I, where I went. All right. Let me see if I can dig up another video here real quick. I'll give you another another perspective on that same thing. Oh, let's see. Uh, so what about chat? What else? Anybody else got anything going? Who, who who's involved with real estate? Anybody got anything going? Anybody new to real estate or, or been buying, own something already? Oh, yeah, corporate America, yep. Yeah. I understand a lot of people do. Hmm. Uh and you know, it's funny because I'm going to text from one of my buddies that I showed around. What I, what I'm going to have to have him on the show sometime because it, I'll tell you what he did. After we did spend some time together, he decided he was going to buy some real estate. And he actually went out and bought a $3 million building that's given him, you know, a, a really nice return. And I don't think he'd have done it if he hadn't met me and, and I hadn't showed him what I showed him. But we'll have to ask him. But he, he likes it a lot. He, he's enjoying it. In fact, he was... <laughs> really, he really lucked out because when it, the building that he ended up buying, it had a dialysis uh, center in it. Dialysis was almost the whole building. So you can't turn those off or everybody's going to die. So that was an essential business that stayed open. In fact, he was sensitive to the fact that, oh, they might be hurting a little bit. I wonder, you know, if they're doing okay. So he had his property manager call him and say, hey, everything okay over there? And they go, uh, okay with what? <laughs> they didn't even know. They were like, what are you talking about? Why wouldn't it be okay? And uh, so that is that is the best, you know. I mean, he really he really did well with it. Yeah, I don't. Know, he didn't certainly didn't anticipate this stuff, but uh, uh, but certainly uh, it was worthwhile. Okay, let me see. You got a couple questions here. I'm trying to dig other video out. I was going to show you another perspective on this thing. Uh, just bought some vacant lots in Arizona and California. Huh. Okay, Alex, the only thing I worry about, whenever somebody tells me they bought in two different states, and I've done it, but uh, most times people do, they're you're getting burned. You know, I had a guy told me, oh, I bought 26 properties, and shit, they're so far away. And I'm going, why'd you buy them? And I mean, they bought them for peanuts, like 3,000. But they're, guess what? They're, 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 they're all trash. You can't get rid of them. He's wondering if I could help them. I'm like, I can't help you. I go, I don't know anything about what you bought. Uh, anyways, uh, somebody else here. I'm new to real estate, trying to find a deal. Just sent mail outs. So far, nothing. Yeah, I know the frustration, Kyle. Sometimes people think their property is worth more. But so take a look at this. I've got another property I haven't shown yet because I can't quite show yet. But I have another property that I remember when I thought it was too much when it was 200000 Of course, that was about 15, 20 years ago. And, uh, and then I thought it was too much when it was 400000 And uh, now I'm buying it <laughs> for just under 600000 Uh And I expect to build an 8,000-square-foot medical office is what I'm probably going to put there. Uh, well, Carlos, here's, okay, listen, this is a decent question. It's got a really simple answer, too. Carlos, you need to get my book, okay, because here's the thing. He says, what is better buying, new houses or old houses? Look, new houses are new, okay? There's not much of a chance you're going to get a really good deal on a new house because it just got built and somebody's got to pay full price for it, right? But if you buy an older house or a house that's been around at least 10, 15 years, maybe that's a newer house by your definition. could be. It kind of is for me. But it's got to be, you know, listen, if it's, if it's, you know, say five to 
10, 15 years old, there's a very good chance that that house is damn near paid for. And since it is damn near paid for, that means that person has the ability to sell it to you for less than it's worth. Where if it's a brand new house, obviously if they just paid 300000 for it, they're not going to sell it to you for 200000 But if it's an older home that's worth 300000 and they only owe fifty, there's a good chance they might sell it to you for 200000 That's That's the main thing. Oh, good. You got it, man. So, listen, you got to read the book a couple times probably, but that's, it's just common sense, right? It's just common sense. If it's brand new, it's very unlikely that it's going to be, uh, uh, completely paid for. So, uh, oh, let me get all this crap out of here. Uh, what did I do here? All right. I was trying to show you guys some other stuff, but not going to happen. Uh, Okay. All right. What do you guys want to do? Let me see what time it is. Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's just take a look. Let's go look at a... I saw a Chris Crone video that I was kind of thinking about taking a look at. Let's just take a look at it. And like I say, I just let's just, let's just watch. I'm not going to watch this whole thing, but... Uh, Oh, hey, that's, hey, look, there we are live. Okay, oh, we got, yeah. You know what's a shame? Is there's 39 people watching, okay? I think I got the best content on the web on real estate. <laughs> and I got 39 people. And I'm fine. Now, listen, I don't care if it's five. It used to be five. I, I'm glad, I'm glad. But it's funny, if I do some hokey thing and criticize, you know, or, you know, and some people enjoy the diagnosis when I go after, you know, somebody else. But uh, what's funny to me is, is uh, you know, you can, you know, if it's a, Going after a fake guru, you know, I'll get thousands of people. If it's if it's talking about making a million dollars, I get you know thirty <laughs> or forty. So you're listen, you're in good company because believe me, you're my audience, the audience that's interested in making money. Let's take a look. And people wonder why. Why do you even bother looking at Chris Crone, or why do I make a video about Chris Crone? The, the reason is is because there's people. There's people that watch Chris Crone that are truly interested in making money in real estate. But people are gullible, and people, you know, a lot of, and some people are just simply, they just want to be, look at the balloons. And so let's, let's listen to what he's got to say here for a minute, and uh, let's just take a look. In your first 12 months as a brand new real estate investor to actually buy five homes, I've got a couple I've never met before right outside my house that are hoping it's possible. In fact, they found me here on YouTube, and they've come hoping that I will actually choose them to partner with them and to help them do just that, buy five homes. Let's go meet them. One, 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 one shot, not a future for sure. Let's go. I'm turning dreams into re- Okay, so see, now this to me is the most self-aggrandizing BS, okay? To me, I would be embarrassed to be that guy. I really would. I'd be embarrassed. Because it's like he's about to start singing or he's gonna, you know, he's a rock star uh, and really, I've never really seen anything of real substance yet come out of them. So, uh, but anyways, I just look, the cars, the, you know, when I'm standing in front of a building, okay, that's, you know, that's, uh, it could be 10 Lamborghinis that, that I could buy. I could be standing in front of 10 Lamborghinis, okay? Uh, or, or, you know, or even like you saw me just sitting under a, a you know, with a crappy metal building and a bunch of, you know, tumbleweeds around me. That's a million dollars, you know, that's four Lamborghinis or four, right? So uh, it, it, th this stuff here is like, uh, you know, it's like, hey, look at the lifestyle. Look at the lifestyle, how great. And, uh, you know, anyways, it got nothing to do with making money, though. But let's just watch. Reality. Yeah. It's one on one shot. Not a picture of sure. Let's go. Yeah. My name is Chris Crone. Uh, I became financially free 15 years ago through real estate, have bought thousands of homes, have done about a billion dollars worth of real estate. And today for fun, I educate and train people how to develop financial freedom through residual income, through real estate. Through I do not think he does it for fun, although it probably is fun, but I don't think, oh, anyhow, let's just keep business. listening. Let's actually meet this couple and see if it's possible to do it with them as well. You must be Ryan. I'm Ryan. Ryan, how are you doing, man? Doing great. Nice to meet you, brother. You too. And Asia, right? Yep. All right. Listen, uh, let's come on in. Okay. I've got some questions for you. 
Let's talk about your goals and ambitions in real estate. And before we build a game plan, I want to find out just a little bit more about who you are and see if it actually makes sense for us to partner. Okay. okay. Deal? Yep. Deal. All right, let's do it. Yeah, that one billion's a big number. Uh, my understanding is that he... He's, he's like Grant in the sense that he, he gets people to invest with him and uses their money as a down payment and gets the funding for the rest. Uh, again, this is the kind of thing that I think is a mistake for an individual investor. And like I'd say, I would take my test, and I haven't seen a testimonial. You know what? That's really would be great to see a testimonial. You know, somebody that, like, like Ron that I had on the other day, you know, he, he bought something for sixty grand, put ten thousand dollars down, and now he he refied it based on a hundred and fifty thousand. So he pulled a hundred grand after putting in seventy. So he put thirty thousand dollars in his pocket, and he's got a, an asset worth one fifty that he owes a hundred on now, but it's cash flowing. In fact, I think he told me it's damn near four thousand or three thousand. I don't have to watch it, uh, but and he's got other ones too. He's he's just like a, he's doing really great, but again. That's the difference of taking control of your own money. And these folks here, you know, uh, I, you know, when they say they want to be partners with him, whatever. Anybody can be. Just send money. Uh, listen, uh, you guys found me through YouTube. You've been tracking me for a while. Uh, and obviously, we're here to talk about real estate partnering. Mm -hmm. yep. I only take on partners that are absolutely ready to get out of their comfort zone of 401ks, IRAs. Guys, traditional financial planning all of that garbage, that doesn't fly with me. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for someone that says it doesn't work and I'm willing to try something new and different so I can tap into higher ROI, accelerate the compound interest and actually become financially free. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. So what makes you think you're so ready for actually tackling, partnering and getting in the game of real estate? Uh, so we, we actually own a triplex right now. We've been, we've been doing real estate for three years. Okay, so. so you've already been a little bit in the game. Right. Awesome. And what is it that you really want? Like, what is, what got you driving here and actually making this happen? Because um, we, we've been following, on you, following you on YouTube and we, we just like your system, kind of the hands off, Chris does all the work and I make the money. I'm okay with that. Okay, yeah. I love, that is amazing. So listen, if you think anybody's going to do all the work and you're going to make a bunch of money, you're in dreamland, okay? You're in dreamland. And if you believe that, just go send your money to Chris, okay? Go to Chris, become his partner, send him your cash that you will not be able to touch because it's tied up, okay? That's the worst part about it. When you invest with somebody else at that level, you throw your money that way, sayonara. Your cash is tied up and going into purchasing property with him. And I don't even know what he gets, what his cut is from what I deciphered from from, uh, you know, they get a they get a management fee. They get different things. I don't know Chris's exact deal. But I can tell you right now, the reason I don't want anybody's money is I don't want any partners, number one. And it's not because I don't want to, I want to cut you out of the profit. I mean, you can find your own deals. You can just find your own deals. It doesn't make any sense. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't look you in the eye and say, you're, you're better off investing with me unless you're just so crazy rich that you and you get you know your your the alternative is to put your money in the bank and get one percent or something like that. But again, let, let's watch. You're okay. <laughs> no, I like that. Asia, what's the motivation? What's the dream for you? What 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 pushes you to want to get this far out of your comfort zone? Um, it would be nice to have him around more often instead of him being at like a nine to five oh. and even like you said, we've got the triplex. It's it, act, it eats more time away because we're having to go over there and fix things yeah. and deal with tenants. Yeah, it's work. And it's work, so folks. It's nice to be able to still do real estate but have him not dealing. So one it. house has already been enough work. <laughs> and so the next five or the next 20, it's kind of like, let's yeah. already get smart now. Yeah, yeah I 100% get it. Yep. So listen, if I take you on as partners, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build a game plan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how we would rearrange your assets. Okay, one. Get rid of all your IRAs, cash out, send the money to me. What's part two? And if it connects with you and makes sense, we're going to go. Sounds good. Cool. Are you ready for that? Yeah. I've set up a whiteboard downstairs, so we're going to head down there and we're going to drop this plan. Okay. You ready? Yep. Let's do Guys, it. Guys, I'm going to speed it up because I... You know, we're hoping to be financially free. Financially free when? Uh, just when we get out of here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I mean, we were thinking like 10 years, but I mean, anything sooner than that. Okay, so your yeah. game plan is, Chris, can you make us financially free in 10 years or less? Or less. Right. I like that. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm just going to tell you right now, I hate society's game plan. Right. Because most people are on track to become financially free in like 184 years to 390. Mm -hmm. yep. And the only problem with that is... He can cut that in half. Right. <laughs> couple of private questions so I can understand how to build this game plan. Okay. What do you do for a living? I'm a manufacturing engineer. Manufacturing? Is this something that you love? No. <laughs> is this something, does your husband love his job? I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. Is this part of the motivation? <laughs> yes. <laughs> how much money do you need to make in here to be able to quit that? Um, so if you have Henry, be nice. Them, I'll have to remove you. Would you feel comfortable at age if you want? Yes. Okay. We just got to figure out how to get there, right? Right. Now, um, Holly. I'm 32. 32. Awesome. Asia, our flags will not ask your age, but 32 years old, and so you might be retired before you get 40, right? Um, in the time that you've been here, have you saved up some assets? Yeah. 401k? Mm -hmm. How much do you have a 401k? Uh, 40,000. Awesome. Now, you've been following me for a while, right? Right. So you know how I feel about 401ks. <laughs> yes. I hate 401ks. I'll flip your head. <laughs> Guys, I want you to understand this. 401ks suck, um, meaning they produce an average of maybe 6%. And for you to actually double your money at a 6% rate, you're going to double your money maybe two and a half times in an entire working career. Okay, listen, I'm not going to argue with them on 401ks. I actually don't hardly even know what they are. I don't own any. Everything I own is in real estate. I have real estate and I have cash, okay? And I have 100% control of my money. You can't save enough for a 401k to have it really meaningful. Where else have you stashed some of your assets? Uh, so we, we don't have it. Okay, so you have a private. Tell me you have it. Um, it. Yeah. Have it for two years. And we own it. Uh, we owe, it was 178 ish 170000 and, and if you were to sell it, what do you think you could get for it? Not sure. Not sure. Okay, you know it's funny, and I'm not saying Chris is doing this, but this is, when you go to a free seminar, a free seminar, this is exactly what they do. What are your hopes and dreams? Do you want to be wealthy? Do you want to not work ever? Do you want to do you want to live free and not have to do anything for it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. So let's see. Let's find out. How much money do you have in your savings? How much money can you pull on your credit card? In other words, they basically find out how big of a mark you are, okay? How big of a mark? How much can we take you for, okay? And depending on how much those people demonstrate that they have, they might go into the platinum room where they got the really good salesman that knows how to take that money. And then the second tier, the guys that maybe have 50,000, 50, they go in that room because that's the ones that, you know, they got the guy that's second best working on those. Uh, anyways, and I'm not saying, again, I, uh, all I know is you should hold the reins of your own money. You should invest for yourself. But again, the problem I have with Chris Crone is he sells a lifestyle. He doesn't really get into the details. But he's, you know, all he's doing is right now, right now, is saying, you know, how much money do you got? And what would you like to do? Be financially free. Yeah. Duh. Let's keep going. But some are five, five, fifty, six hundred thousand dollars Right. So if you were to sell this, you think that you might be able to pull out how much money? I don't know. $300,000. $300,000. Hands down, after having done a billion dollars worth of real estate transactions, I'm going to tell you guys that the real estate that I know of that makes the most money are these American dream single family homes in the best markets. You've seen me talk about that on the YouTube channel, right? Right. And, and if you guys are watching this and you're not a subscriber, you should absolutely subscribe. And I'm gonna break this down real simple. What I'd like to do is I like to buy simple single family homes. They take on average maybe forty or fifty thousand dollars of money as a down payment. That's a twenty percent down payment. If you want to get that money from a nasty 401k, an IRA, a stock portfolio, or even other real estate that isn't growing as aggressively. Okay, so let's do the math. On average, he puts $50,000 on a home when he buys a home. They have $300,000. Wow, give me your 300000 and we can buy six of them. Wow, great. Here you go. <laughs> okay, and then he buys the home. He could pay full retail for it. doesn't matter. Sit on it. It makes, on average, say, 8% a year, and they can have half, or they can have a piece of it, and he can take a piece of it. Again, what do you need Chris for? What do you need Chris for? It's silly, but let's keep going. My real estate typically produces 25% a year ROI. Here's what 25% means. It means that if I made 25% on the money I put down my first year, 25% my second year, 25% my third, 25% my fourth, it means I've made all of my money back, 25 plus 25, 25, I've made 100% of my money in four years. In general, I like to double my money every five years. Does that make sense? Okay. So based on that, we're looking for doing 25% ROI. These homes do produce a cash flow. They also produce tax benefits. Do you have any tax benefits? No. Are you paying money to the government? Yes. Would you like to keep our money? Yes. Good. If you were to sell the private books and if you were to pull money out of your 401k, you've got a couple of things happening for you right now that you should be aware of. Right now with the pandemic, you can actually pull money out of the 401k and you don't have a 10% penalty. 
So the slap on the wrist is gone. Did you know that? You can actually take the taxes that you owe on the 401k, and instead of paying it all front, you'll actually split it over three years. So it's funny, you know, I own, I own uh, I've owned some other companies in my lifetime and, and still own some. And when you have the equipment, you can write off, there's a, oh, I think it's called the, the 179 article or rule. And basically, when we're aware that that 179 lets you buy up to $100,000 worth of equipment and write it all off in the same year, we of course make everybody aware of that, that we're selling something to, so that they know that, hey, you can get a write off here too, by the way. <laughs> So that's just, you know, buying hardware and like tractors and su such stuff like that. But uh, I anyways, this is this is pretty fun to watch. Income level, I see a house producing a 25% ROI that I'm not getting right now. Right. Meanwhile, my 401k is producing 5 6% over 30 year average, 6% compared to 25%. 20 years from now, 25%. So if he's saying he's going to get a 25% return, a 25% return, on the investment. Now he's referring to their investment, which consists of the, I guess, $50,000. So if he's saying he can give them $12,500 a year, okay, a 12, you know, a year, uh, then I would say that's a hell of a deal. But if that's the truth, okay, then Chris, you should have testimonials lined up, you know, a mile long with a billion dollars in sales. There should be, I mean, I mean, you've bought a billion dollars in houses with partners, then I'm telling you, I would love to see the testimonials. I mean, Grant Cardone has like 3,200 investors. Uh, I've never seen a testimonial, never seen anybody say, yeah, I made a lot of money. I'm glad I invested. Uh, but uh, but the returns cr in general that I see him describing are under six percent. But uh, but it'd be interesting to uh, you should just do testimonials. I mean, I, I tell you what, I I'll, I'll throw some money your way too if I can get a twenty five percent return. Maybe I'll sign up. Seriously, I mean, I already know the answer, but I mean, why not? Let's keep listening. Five percent ROI will produce twenty five times more money than the four hundred one k. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, you seem to not be so heartburning if you take money out of your four hundred one k. Remember eating that? Okay. Yeah. All right. Between the triplex and the 401k, and I want to make sure that we have reserves, proper money in the bank account. Uh, what I think we need to be focusing on is buying five homes in the next 12 months. Now, I think that we can probably accomplish that in half the time, six or seven months. Jesus. And all of those homes are going to be cash flow. All of those homes are going to be 25% interest. Oh, so let me tell you something. Back in the good old days, listen, if you can put 25% on the home, you don't need anybody. You can buy that thing by yourself. Easy. I mean, what's the sense? You can, in fact, if you're a first-time homeowner, you can buy with 5% down, okay? And even 3 and a half, I've heard about. I can't verify, but I'm sure that's true. But this is, this is really a great video. I'm glad we're watching this together. Because if he's going to, if these folks are going to hand him Fifty thousand dollars or sixty thousand, because he said he wants some reserves to buy a home that costs two hundred thousand dollars or one hundred eighty thousand or whatever they're going to buy. I mean, that. I, I mean, there's just you don't need anybody. Listen, when, in the eighties, I could buy a home. This was really a great time for buying in in one respect when you had a little bit of money. I could buy anything with twenty five percent down. They'd call it a twenty five percent non qualifying loan. Doesn't matter if your name's Mud. They don't even want to run a credit check. If you've got 25% down, boom, bank will finance whatever you got. It's called a non-qualifier. It was. They don't have it anymore. I wish they did. But a 25% non-qualifier, bang, you know, it'd be great for a lot of people. Hey, Risha, you just getting here? All right, so let's talk about so far. What do you guys think? I may have to cut this, and we'll watch the other half maybe tomorrow or something. Uh I mean, does anybody feel, oh, listen, I, 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 some people are mesmerized by this kind of sales stick, and uh, I'm not. I mean, I, I find it kind of fun to watch because I, I think I already know where this is going. But uh, Chris must have sold timeshares in the past. <laughs> My friend's dad bought 131K in Tesla and wrote it off. Hmm. Uh, well, a Tesla's actually, I mean, listen, I'm not a stock guy at all. And, and even as good as, as, as Tesla has done, you know, it's gone up four times, I think. In, in, I mean, it's gone up 400%, I think, in just a very short time. And, uh, you know, 
again, it's it's a rarity that those things happen. They do happen. They do happen here and there. But, you know, that's just one. Uh, but I know, like I say, I don't know anything about stocks. And I don't pretend to. No, I'm sure that couple is real. I mean, what's what's not to believe? You know, a couple of people say, hey, we got money. We don't want to work our whole life. You seem to be promising, a, you know, that this, this, you know, that's the thing. They're buying all the, they're buying what they, what, they're buying the stick, right? The, the beginning, we got to the very beginning, remember? Uh, all this stuff here, the lifestyle. Let's go see a little square there. The break dancing, you know, the cool cars, and all the stuff. You know, it, it's, you know, it's, it's like you're buying a lifestyle. Actually, you, Spencer Cornelia did a good good video on Chris Crone. Spencer Cornelia. Uh, and I actually did a review on Spencer Cornelia's video. But you can see mine on him, too. you got to see them both at the same time. Watch it together if you watch mine. <laughs> but anyway, let's, let's watch a little more. And I'll be killing it here pretty quick. Five years, five homes. If they double, it becomes what? It becomes 10 homes. You got it. And five years later, 10 homes becomes 20 homes. This is the start of the game plan. Does that make sense? So with what you have here alone, dude, we're ready to jump into action and we're ready to actually do real estate. Now, you guys are my partners, so I want you to understand what's gonna happen, what I'm gonna do and what I need you to do. So I have a team of 200 experts that sit in the three top markets. And what they're gonna do is we buy homes from auctions, we scour the MLS, we use 17 different methods for buying hunt homes, repossessed short sales, and we're basically, I'm buying about a home a day. And so I already have a team that goes out there and will research and find the very best deals. They're gonna put in on each one of those homes in a 341 hours of work going to Home Depot, um, driving around, managing the rehab process, researching and finding, buying, doing all the math. Does that make sense? So 300 hours, buying homes, this is 1,500 hour undertaking. But I'm going to have experts doing it, and I do not want you to put in any of that time. I'm going to get on a plane, I'm going to fly to Florida, and I'm going to personally look at some of the homes that we're going to try to negotiate. So I just want you to know, I've got oversight with my team on this entire process. I'll get you on the phone. I don't want you on a plane. I want to get you on the phone and say, look at the house. Can we put an offer on this one? Let's get this deal. Because the numbers make sense. Now, the information I'm going to give you, it's going to look complicated, but it's all going to come down to this number. Are we going to get the ROI? You want to know how to replace your job income? Here's what I think we've got. I think we've got a phase one and phase two. Okay. Phase one, that wants to buy five homes this year. We're probably going to do it in six or seven months, but the goal is to do it in under 12 months. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Then, five years from now, I want five to become 10, and then I want 10 to become 12. Phase two, I'm going to show you, once you have confidence in your portfolio and track record, I'm going to show you then how to actually pull in other people's money so that you can partner with others without using any of your own money. That's why I bought 24 homes with 10 grand and became financially free. Does that make sense? Yeah. I just think I can do it faster for you. Yeah. Um, so really, if you learn anything from this, is you should do what Chris did. You should use other people's money because that's what he's doing. That's how he became financially free. He, he partnered with other people and used their money, and he's still doing it. And uh, but they're on the they're on the wrong side of the deal here. <laughs> you know, they're on the wrong side of the deal. But uh, all right, let's get to some questions here, and we'll we'll pick up with this uh, tomorrow or something. Let's remember where we're at. Eleven minutes and twenty seconds. If somebody wants to remember that. Uh, yeah. So mentorship is every. Yeah. What it is is listen. If you, some of them are talking about the mentorship, on the mentorship, what I do is. Uh, you know, I did an informal meeting the other day. We just kind of get to know a lot of people. We do a Zoom class. Everybody's in there. We're looking at each other. And we're just, you know, we're, a, we're talking. It's all about substance. It's all about making money. I'm not asking you how much money you got in your bank account. I'm not asking you those types of things. It's, you know, I mean, if you're talking about buying something, I'll say, well, can you have the money for the down payment? You know, But I'm talking about you making a deal for yourself. I don't have any any stake in taking any of your money. I don't want it. I don't want it. I mean, I'll take the money for the mentorship, but I work my ass off for it. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be, I mean, you're not learning anything with this. They're just saying here, hand me your money and I'll invest it for you. I mean, I suppose I could do that, but you know, it's, you know, I don't need it. I got my own money. Uh, yeah, Max, listen, you could, I can tell you right now, I don't even know. I think I might have some people out of the country. I know it I got tons of sales in the UK and Canada. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, th I think I do. I'm not sure. I don't actually know for sure, but I can tell you right now, it's not bad information. No there's nothing there. It's, it's all relative. You'll still be fine. The, the things that are, that are maybe slightly out or slightly different, uh, are just a little bit, you guys have some, you know, you guys got some weird, you got a lot of government bureaucracy, bureaucracy, like, just like we do. We got the same kind of crap, just different crap. But, uh, who you could to talk to, Max, and I'll write it down here, is Monopoly. 
Okay, Monopoly is a buddy of mine. Andy runs that t- that show. Andy at Monopoly. That's you can actually Andy at Monopoly dot com is his email, by the way. Uh, he, listen, he's he did a book review on me and uh, on my book, and uh, you can uh, you know just look into talk to talk to Andy. He'll he'll point you straight. But I already know. Yeah, you can you you'll do well. It would help you. And if you don't have the book, hey, you, sh- you should have the book. If you have the book, you'd probably know right away. But I can tell you, I'm sure Andy feels it strongly that it, it is great. Uh, would you do a video on Jerry Norton? I don't know who he is, but maybe. Jerry Norton. You know, if I had more time, I'd just pop over there and go do it right now. But uh, so look, if you just got here, uh, my name's Tom. My book, Wake Up and Smell the Real Estate, it's been a bestseller on Amazon and Kindle. I've been making videos for years, showing people how to make money. Of course, my I'm sucking the ratings because I don't have all the razzle dazzle and and uh, and you know just recently have I been getting a lot more recognition since I got my book. Did my first mentorship class, and I have several people already that have made you know between the between them all, there's you know hundreds of thousands of dollars, and and they were actually buying stuff before before the class was finished. Uh, so, but what I do is I just do one month. It's just concentration. You have to own my book first. If you don't have to buy my book, I'm not, you can't even be in the class. It's a $10 book. Uh, but that's where you start. And, uh, but get the book. You can get a lot of people order it on Kindle and start reading it. And then they get their hard cover book comes in a little later. And then they look at that. And, uh, and then everybody's asking me to make an audio book, but you know what? You can just, you can even just listen to me on YouTube and that's your audio book. But although I have to say, the audio book, I'm sure, is a good idea because it's concentrated. And I actually go off the book a little bit and I tell some stories and some things that are relative to those chapters. And they're kind of like I do in the book. In the book, I go to these things called flashbacks where I talk about you know experiences that I've had. And it's all important stuff. It's all important. Now, there's nothing I would share with you that isn't important. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but get the book. And uh, let's see here, uh, Canada here, we pay more in taxes, but essentially everything else in... Is the same. Oh, yeah, Tom's book is great and well worth it. Thanks, Will. I appreciate that. Uh, but, yeah, look, it, the book is filled with stuff that is relative to wherever you, if you have the ability to buy a piece of property anywhere, it's relative. to the, It's relative. You can use it. You, you, Max, I'd say just, if you want to take the mentorship, take the mentorship. But I don't want you to take the mentorship if you don't already own the book. Get the book first, okay? Uh, again, I've told people no. I had a guy write me today. And, and actually, I got, I got a couple, of, you know, say, hey, you know what? I have zero. How about a challenge? You can show me how to make a bunch of money. And I'm like, you know what? Not interested. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm the testimonial for make going from zero to, you know, tens of millions. Okay. Uh, I've been doing this for 39 years. I've been buying property every year for 39 years. And that's, I mean... <laughs> That's why I know what I know. I've been doing it for a very long time. And uh, you got the benefit of learning from somebody that's done it a, a bunch. I haven't done it all. I'm still doing stuff. I still run into things that, that catch me off guard. In fact, I learned something from Ron. Uh, if, if you get in the class, you'll see the Zoom meeting from that. It was pretty funny, actually. But uh, uh, anyways, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it quits. Thanks for hanging out. I uh, hope you uh, subscribe. And, uh, you know, it helps the channel, but also you, you, you should just watch for your own good. Just, just learn. It's free. It costs nothing to listen, right? So anyhow, that's it, and uh, I'll, I'll see you all later. Bye.